Bud's Grove. Happy to have you. Come on in. This is a historic home built in about 1860. The uh, Mudd family lived here from about 1865 to 85. There's a picture of Mr. Mudd in the parlor here. They moved here from Pittsfield, Illinois. In Pittsfield, he owned a store along with some younger brothers. None of the uh, furnishings are really from that time, but they're all similar to what would have been here in the 1860s and 70s. Next room is the dining room. The pictures of our Mr. and Mrs. Matthews, who had a home in South Kirk, would actually where the current stick and shake is at the corner of Watson and Lindbergh. The uh, sconces on the mantle were originally candles and they were electrified. There are actually nine fireplaces in the home. Of course, that was the only way of heating in those times. This was originally a two-story summer porch, and now it's uh, modernized to act as a catering kitchen, because we do rent out for parties. This was originally a two-story porch, open, of course, to the air. Now be careful as you come this way because it's uneven. This originally was part of the porch and there was a, another building over here which was the kitchen. The kitchen was a separate building because we didn't want the cooking to catch fire and spread to the main house. So this was another building the kitchen was. The stove is in honor of later occupants and owners of the home, a Dana family who lived here from um, 1920 to 40. spinning wheel. The term spinster came from spinning wheel because uh, they were, didn't have anything else to do with single ladies but spin, so they called them spinsters. This is a book press. We have a lot of kitchen artifacts in this room and many of the implements that would have been used by a cook in those days. Croquet set. <laughs> So the house was joined together, and you can tell um, that how wide the walls were. It's well insulated, the walls were quite thick, like 14 inches. And this is another parlor. This is used quite a bit for meetings and parties. Now, yeah. it was in those days, and it is still. The sofas are similar to what they would have been when the mods lived here. When central heating was added, uh, there was a radiator in there, I believe. Some of the fireplaces, at least one of them still works. Victorian Square Piano, donated by William Bodley Lane, who was the last resident of this place. He lived here the longest. He lived here from 1960 to 2000. Uh, he was a bachelor, an architect, and upstairs we'll see um, his, we call it uh, the chapel, because he was a very religious man and from St. Peter's Church, he had um, donated to him an altar and some pews. Oh. So that's the, the chapel room upstairs. 
this was originally in the chapel upstairs, this frame, and now it has a mirror, but in Mr. Lane's day, it had uh, a religious painting. So we'll see his uh, chapel upstairs. This is a member of the Bodley family who were very uh, influential in Kirkwood, farming in Kirkwood. This is used for special exhibits now. Uh, currently, there's a World War I exhibit in here. These are the pews I was telling you about that Mr. Uh, Lane received from St. Peter's Church in Kirkwood. And this is the altar. The home, the dollhouse here, is a replica of the history house that preceded this one. It's on Argonne, about a mile east of here. It's now a private residence. Mr. Lane decided that he uh, could no longer keep up the home. It was falling into disrepair. So in 1992, he sold it to the Kirkwood Historical okay. Society. And after years of renovation, it was open to the public. And this is where they, in this room somewhere, was that huge religious painting. All right, this is the west bedroom. Sleigh bed, this is called, for obvious reasons. There, there's a picture over there of made of hair, and that was done in the 1860s and 70s. Women would cut their hair and form it into artwork, and that's what that picture is. And this is an armoire over here, uh, used sort of instead of a closet because closets were taxed, so they weren't built into the house. A lot of dried flowers in the house. And look at the waistline of this lady's dress. It's unbelievable. This is sort of a toy room in here. A hobby horse. A number of these dolls are very old and quite valuable. Blocks on them. A lot of interesting things in here. Another doll house. Italian tiles over the fireplace, around the fireplace. old blocks the children would play with. Don't know who the girl is in the picture. When the Muzz bought the property, it extended all the way to Essex, which is right away to the north, and then to the west into Kirkwood Park which is about three blocks from here. So they had a lot of land originally.
think the house shows really well really with well the decoration. and our Christmas candlelight tour. We're delighted to have you here. The house is beautiful, decorated for Christmas. Thank you. 
But he had a brother, and he, I'm sorry to tell you that the house became kind of too much for him to take care of. And uh, so he brought his brother and his family in. Oh, and okay. They lived in here oh, also. Okay. So that's where Bodley came from. Yeah. Oh. He was a Bodley family. Okay. Right. Well, there you go. Yeah, he was a bachelor. So Interesting. Thank you. Oh, we don't know. <laughs> so that's where he came from. It's just a really cool picture. I'm Jim Baker. I wrote the books on the Merrimack Highlands. <laughs> They're 25 each with taxes, 27, 25. So, you know, when I, I've got one more volume coming out next year. And so at, at that point, I hope to put this book in that kind of format. Whether that will happen or not, I don't know. Hi, Jack. Well, hello, Jim. It's been a long time. Been a while, yeah. yeah. Got a new book out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Another view, and it's uh, oh. so it goes into like the ice houses and different parts oh. of the resort that didn't get and the farm and the resort. I'm glad you're still in the and, and the dairies and stuff. So yeah, that's great. Long history, you know. What I did in this book that I didn't do in this one is I brought the history up to within the last few years. Oh, okay, sure. So like for the train station, went through the whole battle with the city of Perth and the developers. And, there he is. Merry Christmas. We don't know who that gentleman is, but uh, maybe someday we'll find out. <laughs>